Hey everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lines Performance Chapel on StarMolePars.com. Bit away is from the camera here, so bear with me. <laughs> but, uh, I realized we were about to start making progress and hadn't recorded anything, so uh, here we are again. It is Sunday afternoon. I'm up under the truck. If you were here, it would smell like a tropical oasis. Uh, shot a ton of Chemical Guys stuff all over the frame. Uh, diff cover. Tried to clean it up a little bit. And uh, you can kind of see remnants of that. Got to be careful. Uh, you'll be uh, rolling around on the creeper and you'll have some, uh, <laughs> what was that one? Cherry cherry blossom, whatever that thing is. Uh, drop down as long as it doesn't get in your eye, I suppose it's okay. But, uh, if you couldn't orient yourself by this power steering pump being out of place in the grill guard brackets, this is, of course, the front end of the truck. That's where the engine should be. So... Uh, before I put the engine in, it made sense to me. Uh, I thought this would be easier to access with the engine out. Turns out uh, that it probably would have made zero difference at all because I was thinking at the time I might come in from the top. I still might, but uh, the issue we've got here, front diff, it's Dana. Don't know if you can make out the little diamond logo there, trying to keep the camera out of the nasty stuff. But uh, we have the uh, three-quarter craftsman here doing work because... I don't think I have a shallow 12 points and a ratchet combination that would clear there. So, uh, bottom line, what I'm going to try to do, you can see the pan is there. I've got a pump over here. <laughs> so, what I'm going to attempt to do here is drain this out. And if you're thinking, hey, there's not going to be much that comes out of that, buddy. Well, you would be correct because, of course, that's a fill plug. But what I'm going to try to do... Um, Typically with a diff, you know, especially like if it's performance stuff, you'd want to, in my case, with an eight and three quarter, you got to pull the pumpkins and stuff if you don't have a plug. But uh, coming in here with a Dana stuff, if you don't have the drain plug, it's probably advisable to pull the front cover, uh, let it drain naturally, you know, from like the bottom three, four bolts, something like that. And then primarily just because you have access to wipe the bottom, that's where all of your like shrapnel, you know, and... Uh, metal would collect obviously down towards the bottom. I think these are in fairly good shape knock on wood and uh, I've wanted really badly to try using a pump like that to extract the gear oil. Uh, you could certainly do that. You could use a vacuum pump would probably be way better. Currently I don't own one so uh, that might be a total pain in the butt. Honestly Given the space constraints here, you know, if you're standing up, if this is on a lift and you're standing, and this is probably simple, if you're like me and you're on your back on a creeper and you have to, you know, jump and meander around over all of these suspension obstacles, it's possibly easier to just pull the diff cover and do it the old fashioned way. But uh, what I'm thinking is I'm going to try it this way and see how it goes and then. If we manage to do it here, we'll do the same thing on the rear. We'll also probably throw the ATF in the uh, transfer case in this video. But uh, I'm going to spin this off again. One man, only two hands. <laughs> and, uh, basically, if you were unsure, though, all right, we've got our, I can't see what I'm doing, but uh, we got our wrench here. It's 12-point box in. Right is tight, left is loose. We want to pop it out. There's a small chance gear oil will drain out if you've never changed gear oil. It's going to stink. <laughs> And uh, be prepared for that. Uh, main thing, like if today it's cold, you're in a hoodie, roll the sleeves up because uh, you can wipe it off your arm easier than you can wipe it off your sleeve. So uh, anyway, I'm going to quit talking and I'm going to get to wrenching here quite literally. And we'll see if somehow I can maybe pull this thing out. So uh, I will keep you posted how it goes. All right. So probably shot like 10 or 12 rounds from the big pump. And I was at that point, I realized it wasn't really going to bottom out. I thought I had like some T adapters and like line reducers and stuff for uh, clear tubing. Could not find it, so <laughs> just grab that guy. That is designed actually to thread onto uh, bottles of gear oil and fill uh, differentials, if you will. But uh, it worked really, really well. Uh, 274 pumps uh, was the count there. Again, this I didn't really count them, but I want to say it was around 10 ish somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, so needless to say, not very comfortable of a thing to do laying sideways on a creeper when your shoulders don't clear in here, uh, primarily because of the grill guard. But uh, 
once you started seeing a few bubbles you knew you were getting close that was probably around like 265 or so and then just a couple more to empty it out uh, of course i've jostled the position along there and uh feel pretty confident now the only sad thing is that gear oil was about the cleanest gear oil i've seen come out of a differential uh, so i was pretty happy to see that that said it has been in there a long time so you know makes sense to go ahead and change it obviously especially with major upgrades to the truck so that's what we're doing and uh the good news is it should be pretty easy to fill so i guess we will jump on that all right so here we are got everything pumped out pretty happy with how that went and uh, i've gone over i've acquired my ams oil 80w90 is what we're going to be running in the front div again synthetic that's the way we're going to want to roll uh pro tip here go ahead and uh, you're going to need for this differential it's always going to vary you know best thing to do is actually see what came out and match that in accordance but if you don't have a ton of crazy measuring devices that's sort of more of a pain than anything so going by the factory fill capacities 2.4 quarts each one of these being one quart so we're going to need basically two and a half bags right i have never used this type of thing before I've always had like the old school Valvoline, you know, gear oil containers, if you will. But uh, excited to use this. And given the space constraints, especially if you had an engine. Now, keep in mind, with the engine gone, I could go stand in the engine bay and I could have, I mean, you know, a five gallon fuel cell and dump it into the rear end, front end, if we wanted to. But uh, anyway, excited to use these. Now, what you're going to want to do, don't come in and just start snipping all three of these caps off, right? They thread on, they thread off, cut one, keep the other for backup, right? And uh, then in the case of the third quart, you're actually going to have a little over a half of that, if you measure everything correctly, still in there. So, uh, best advice, keep the caps on. Now, the other thing I did, if I roll you over here, those, uh, they're not the fancy ones, but they're the Kanimpex Super Cutters, right? And, uh, I gotta go find the thing, but I was standing right there, you know, by the oil filter when I cut the uh, first little court there. The top of that thing flew off at an angle, managed to hit the ceiling, and then I heard it land on something that sounded plasticky, uh, which would be basically against the... Uh, west wall of the shop so keep in mind i'm here it arcs up kind of behind my airlines up there ricochets off the ceiling and lands far 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 from where we are so uh might want to wear safety glasses or just put your hand in front of that if you're using something like that uh i do recommend you use side cutters or a dedicated cutter for that just because if you've got crud on your pliers uh, there's less of a chance anything falls in and gets in your gear oil. So, uh, With all that said, I'm going to quit rambling. I'm going to start squeezing these little high C Capri Sun hybrid thingies and uh, get some gear oil back in the front diff. All right, so as promised, simply switch the lid over to this one. Again, you want to cap that one off. Uh, don't just throw it around. There's probably just a little bit of residual in it. Gotta say, I do kind of like using that. Uh, it was sort of awkward at first in part just because the uh, fill hole is completely obscured from my sight when you're on a creeper like I am. <laughs> but, uh, once I worked that out, I actually did not approach it from top down. I started just kind of straight out, if you will. This is flexible so you can kind of tweak the neck. Uh, went to town in that manner and then once it got low enough, I kind of repositioned it, get all the oil down in the bottom, flipped it up, and let gravity do its thing. But uh, going to go ahead. We've got uh, one quart in. Time for the second quart. And <laughs> we will uh, repeat the process for about four tenths of another one, hopefully. All right, so there we are. It's uh, super awkward. I'm freezing out here. But I uh, got the plug back in. Before it went back in, I did take it over to the wire wheel, kind of cleaned it up, tightened everything back down with our three quarter box in wrench. And I got to say, the front diff is a wrap. So that's uh, our third quart right there. Used roughly half of it or so. And uh, again, it's very difficult on your side on a creeper with the suspension in place to get your head in this cavity right here and look down and kind of evaluate it. But basically, you want to keep it quarter, half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch below the plug. It would be ideal. Uh, of course, the simplest way to do things is to just fill it up until it comes out. <laughs> and uh, While you could do that, and that's the way to go, uh, you could also just kind of lap a little bit out if you want to. But uh, nonetheless, that is what we've accomplished tonight. Uh, I guess next we'll be moving to the rear differential. 
But I uh, put a pizza in the oven when I ran in a second ago, so I'm going to go grab that thing, uh, warm up a little bit, and I guess I will hit the rear end tomorrow. So uh, stay tuned. We'll pick up here right where we left off. But again, first time using that style of a uh, gear oil bag. Pretty good. Uh, fairly happy with it. Again, with the, all of the oddities here, it would be really hard, particularly if you do have the motor in the vehicle, uh, which 99% of the time you will. That makes the old school bottles kind of a pain. So uh, that's a win there. And uh, we got the front diff filled with 8W90 from Amsoil. So uh, coming up, we'll hit the Dana in the rear.